Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, so today we've got homework for lesson 8.2.4. Uh, in these M&Ms, we've got uh, some very cryptic, I didn't remember it being this way, laws of exponents where they show you, uh, but they're not even telling you or describing what these laws are. So I guess I'm going to write them in and you can uh, jot this down as well. Uh, we've already got a lot of these written into your, uh, your journal because I incorporated it into what we were teaching. Uh, with the lessons, but uh, this basically this one right here is the product of powers rule that says, or property that says that when you're multiplying two powers that have the same base, you're going to keep the base and you're going to add the exponents. So this is like if you took 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 2nd, that would be equal to 2 to the 6th power. Right, picture that expanded out. That was the very first one that we ever worked with. Then we have the power of a power. Stop it. Power of a power, which states that if you are raising a power to another power, you will actually multiply those exponents. So for this one, if we were to take, uh, no, 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 yes. Okay, if we were to take three to the second power and raise that again to the fifth power, that would be three to the second times 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 three to the second becomes three to the tenth because eventually you will have ten threes being repeatedly multiplied there. This particular property is what we call the quotient of powers, meaning you are dividing powers with the same base. And this is the opposite of product of powers. So instead of adding the exponents, you would subtract them. So if you took, let me write it over here, uh, 10 to the seventh divided by 10 to the third, 7 minus 3 is 4, that's going to give you an answer that is 10 to the 4th power. And we pictured this one where if you expand out all the 10s being repeatedly multiplied across the top and all the 10s on the bottom, and then you cancel out the common factors, they form giant ones. So 3 from the bottom cancels out with 3 from the top, leaving you with 4 on the top. So once again, 7 minus 3 is 4, so 10 to the 7th divided by 10 to the 3rd is 10 to the 4th. This, as you are probably aware, is the, oh, what color should I choose here? Should I choose, how about that one right there? It's a nice color. This is called the uh, zero exponent property, which tells us that anything to the zero power is always going to be equal to one, no matter how ridiculous the base is. If the entire base is raised to the zero power, it's always going to be equal to one. This property here is referred to as the power of a product property. And it's also incorporating power of a power because it means when you have to take this exponent, which applies to everything inside the parentheses, and do the power of a power property with the base that is the x and the base that is the y. So you will multiply these guys together like we did there and you'll do it again with the y so it's it's uh yeah it's kind of power this is supposed to be power of a product but it really incorporates both so let me give you an example where if i said 2x raised to the fourth power becomes 2 to the fourth and x to the fourth if i said 2 squared x to the third, and then I raised it again to the fourth power, you would do 2 times 4, which is 8, and 3 times 4, which is 12. So not only are you applying this exponent to each one of those factors that's on the inside, but you're also doing the power of a power property along the way. Okay, so what did we call this? This was the power of a product property where these two guys are being multiplied together so they represent a product so this has to apply to each of the factors 
within that product. And then the zero exponent, I guess I'll go with purple all the way because it's so nice. Uh, zero exponents, no. Negative exponents. Tells you that whenever you've got a negative exponent and you want to rewrite this expression with a positive exponent, you're going to take the reciprocal of whatever your base is and then change that to a positive exponent. And this will be the same. And now you're going to have 1 to the a power over x to the a power. And 1 to any power is always going to be equal to 1. So we just write it as x over a. So if I change this to 3 to the negative second power, that's going to be the same as 1 third to the positive second power, which is 1 third times 1 third, which becomes 1 over 3 squared or 1 over 9 if you want to write it in standard form. All right, so the more times you practice this, the easier it gets. It's a lot. Let me tell you, eighth grade math, this is a lot of formulas and a lot of random things that are getting thrown at you right away that you got to master right away. And I do not uh, envy <laughs> you having to learn so many things so quickly. But it is what it is, and you'll keep practicing it, and you'll keep applying it. And by the time you get into ninth, tenth, eleventh grade, this will become second nature to you, all of these properties and all these rules. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, this is a little much. Let's go ahead and do this first. How's that? All right, so compute each product or quotient. Convert the final answer to scientific notation if necessary. Okay, I might actually need to show some work here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this and that. And I'm going to do this so that I can show some work in here. All right. So when you're multiplying 3 times 10 to the second times 2 times 10 to the third, literally this is 300 being multiplied times 2,000. So I think my answer is going to be like uh, 600,000 or something. But using scientific notation, we would take the 3 times the 2, which is 6, and we would multiply the 10 to the second times the 10 to the third, which is 10 to the fifth. So our final answer is 6 times 10 to the fifth. Not too bad, right? Here, we're going to multiply 2.75 times 2.5, and that gives you 6.875. And then when you multiply 10 to the negative second times 10 to the eighth, remember, our product of powers property says keep your base, add your exponents. Negative 2 and 8 is 6. So this becomes 6.87 times 10 to the sixth. This example, we're going to split this up into two fractions. So this becomes 8 over 4 times... 10 to the 12th over 10 to the 5th. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then when you are, right, quotient to the powers property, when you're dividing two powers with the same base, you're going to keep your base and you're going to do a subtraction because if you took 10 and repeatedly multiplied it 12 times and 5, or 10 repeatedly multiplied 5 times in the denominator, you'd be able to cancel out 5 giant ones, leaving you with 7 tens to repeatedly multiply. No, no. No, no. Yes. Okay. So you cancel out seven from the bottom and seven from the top, leaving you with five remaining. So 12 minus seven is five. That's your final answer. All right. Now use the laws of exponents to simplify the following expressions. Well, uh, product of powers, keep your base, add your exponents, x to the seventh. Quotient of powers, keep your base, subtract your exponents. Seven minus four is three. What is this? Same thing as that? Eh, I guess x to the third times x to the fourth. 3 plus 4 is 7. Same answer, different powers. But they ultimately end up showing you the same thing. This one, you had your parentheses here. This one, we had our parentheses like that. Same thing, x to the seventh. All right, for each of the following examples, tell whether there's a positive, a negative, or no association between the variables. All right, so the number of inches of rain per hour and the height. Oh, we've already done all this, haven't we? Well, we've done that one. But if it rains more, you can have more water uh, in the reservoir. So that's positive. Both are increasing the amount of rain and water level in the reservoir. <clears throat> 
the amount of food a person eats and how many he or she has, there's no correlation between those. Uh, the height of the tree and the amount of nutrients it gets, it's positive. We've already seen this. I don't want to do this again. Let's move on. Um, all right, Sylvia has a picture from her trip to the Grand Canyon. This is a lovely picture. The photo is four inches tall by eight inches, no, six inches wide. She would like to make the photo larger for her wall that is as big as possible. The widest the enlarged photo can be is 48 inches. How tall will the enlarged photo be? Okay, so that's this one right here. If it's a four to six ratio and you can make the length 48, then what do you multiply times six to give you 48? I believe that's an eight, correct? So we'll multiply four times eight, and that would mean it would be a 32 by 48 inch picture. Sylvia also wants a wallet size photo to carry around with her. This is obviously someone who is phone challenged and is, does not have pictures in her smartphone. She wants it 1.5 inches tall. How wide will it be? Well, same process. Just what do you multiply times four to give you this? Actually, in this case, I would probably cross multiply. I'd probably take four X's and six times one and a half is gonna be six plus three is nine. And then when you divide nine by four, you get two and a quarter inches. So that would be the width. Uh, since the beginning of school, Stephen has been saving money to buy a new MP3 player. Uh, we're dating ourselves now. Uh, his uh, bank balance is presented by the graph below. Okay, so it looks like he starts uh, at the very beginning. It's probably around $27, $28 in the bank. And it's been increasing steadily, but he's not always putting in the same amount of money. But on average, we can figure out how much on average he puts into his bank account every single week by creating a line of best fit and finding a couple of lattice points. So what have I done here? It says, according to the graph, about how much money had Steven saved after two weeks. So here it looks like it's somewhere around $40. After about, uh, or about how much money did he have after the fourth week? So it looks like at the fourth week, it's about $55. And if he keeps saving at this rate, about how much money would we expect at the seventh week? We would expect that to be somewhere between 70 and 80, probably about $75. Notice they didn't ask us for the rule, but we could have, we have enough information to figure out what the rule would be. Uh, we could do that and then we could predict for any dollar amount that we want, but I'm not going to because they're not asking us to and I wanna be done with this. All right, so the science club is selling homemade cookies to raise money for a field trip. The club members know that 12 dozen cookies use three pounds of flour. Use the following information to solve each part. So here's our ratio, 12 dozen cookies, three pounds of flour. How much flour is needed for 18 dozen cookies? All right, look for your giant one or cross multiply. Um, I would say this, why not just change this to four dozen for every one pound? Seems like that would make our jobs a little bit easier, especially for this one, four over one, because you'd multiply one times 10 to give you 10, so four times 10 is gonna give you your 40 dozen. But this one still is a little tricky, because what do you multiply times four to give you 18? Turns out it's four and a half, okay? So if you didn't want to do the giant one and simplify, you could always cross multiply and get 12 X's is equal to 54, but then you're now going to have to take 54 and divide it by 12. And let's just verify that that's what we get. 54 divided by 12 is four and a half. Yes. And then here you're going to get three X is equal to 120. And I know for sure that 120 divided by three is 40. So we got both of those correct. Hooray. And we are on. All right. Let's move on. Take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good. Like I should. Winning the blue of